Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Daily DMs. Today we're gonna answer a really basic question. And the question comes in from Lance underscore Vill on Instagram. So if you guys want your questions answered, hit me up on my Instagram DMs and you'll possibly end up on one of these YouTube videos. So let's get into it. Lance says, hey Pace, newly big fan of yours. You do great work and help so many people out. I have a quick question for you. Is subject to a good idea if I'd want to live in the house? It's actually not for me, but for my younger sister. She's interested in a home that has very little equity in it, and I want to suggest to her to go this route compared to taking out a loan and creating a whole new mortgage. So the first thing I say to him, as you guys can see on the screenshot, is I live in my own sub two house. And actually the property that I bought was a house that had no equity. Remember, one of the rules of creative finance, people are gonna disagree with me and some people are gonna tell me I'm very aggressive, but equity comes and equity goes. People don't buy properties based on equity. I'm sorry, I disagree with you other gurus who say you gotta have a ton of equity. Every homeowner, so here's the truth, every homeowner that is buying off the MLS, especially in today's market, is paying full retail for their homes. And after closing costs and all these other things, and then also furniture and moving expenses and all that kind of stuff, their total outlay in a property they buy is well over retail. It takes most homeowners six to 10 years to even get back to a position of having any equity. So if you're going to live in the property, it's not about equity. It's about a home that you can raise your family in, especially long-term. So. The answer is yes, I live in my own sub two. At the time when I purchased this property, we're in my home studio right now. When I bought this property back in 2019, I bought this at full retail. Now the market has gone crazy. We've had this whole pandemic situation. So of course the appreciation has gone crazy. I can't I can't really rely on that appreciation. I didn't buy the house for the appreciation and I definitely did not buy the house based on its current price. I bought the house based on the fact that I could move my family in, I didn't have to go get a loan, I didn't have to use my own credit, I didn't have to even show any verification of income or tax returns or anything in order for me to buy this home. So yes, I think if you're going to buy your own home, subject to is a way, way easier way to go. It's not even whether I think that or not, it is absolutely true. So how do I find subject to homes? Well, I've done other videos on how and and where to find subject to deals. But ultimately for me, this was a listing that had failed. A real estate agent had a hard time selling this property because it had no equity. So I had a relationship with that real estate agent who came to me at the ninth hour of their listing agreement with the seller and said, please help me. I'm gonna lose my relationship with the seller, please help me. And I came in with a subject to offer, made the deal happen, and my wife ended up falling in love with the house. So we, instead of buying this property to rent it out, which this house would cash flow $1,000 per month on a traditional rental, and if I turn it into an Airbnb, it'd probably be somewhere around $2,500 a month in cash flow. So the equity was never a decision factor at all. It was never a decision factor. It was. How much is it going to cost me in cash to buy this property? So closing costs, did the seller want any cash? Did I have to pay commissions to the agent? Those are the things that I cared about, not the price of the home. But above all of those is if I put that cash into the property, would I be able to cash flow this property at any time in the future? The answer was yes, it's a great investment. Please, please, please remember, equity comes, equity goes, but the cash, should always flow. So for me in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, even when there's still a mortgage on this property, this property will only cash flow incrementally higher and higher and higher as the rent rates increase in the future. So my mortgage payment stays exactly the same for the next 25 years or so. That's what's left on this mortgage. But over the next 25 years, how many times will the rent rates increase Who knows, but I do know that it'll probably raise five to $800 over the next 20 to 25 years. So in 20 years, I'm making more money than today. So to finalize your question, 
and give you the answer is yes. Buy your first house subject to, buy every house subject to, or on seller finance, either way. For me personally, I would never go out and get another loan as long as I can avoid it by buying subject to or seller finance. Now, guys, what we're gonna be doing on the daily DMs is on a weekly basis, my team is going to be selecting the best comments in the YouTube videos. My team's going to be selecting people to get some shirts and some other things. And more important, we're gonna be giving you guys leads for your own businesses. As you guys know, we use batch leads for just about everything. That's where we pull our list. That's where we comp our properties. That's where we send out our text messages. It's where we even dial out from. We use the batch dialer. So if you guys want a discount on the batch system, click the link down below. The code is PACE. It gives you 5,000 lists for, or I'm sorry, 5,000 records for free when you sign up. Use the code PACE. I'm one of the only two people on the internet that actually have that code. So code PACE will give you 5,000 records, whether you wanna pull those records for buyers, sellers, whatever, okay? Now, every Friday, my team is going to be picking out YouTube comments down below and giving people extra leads and just encouraging you guys to continually strive forward in your business. Thank you so much for tuning into the daily DMs. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I will see you on the next episode.